So here we are again. It is, what day is it? It's Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. I am Michelle Cozy Egg, and this is episode 114, I think. Yeah, 114. <laughs> I can't believe I've done this. 113 times well a little more because there have been a couple other videos in there but anyway here we are and um i thought for sure that i had recorded in february i thought for sure that it had only been around a month i was mistaken so apparently the last time I recorded was January 26th. So here we are. And I was just saying to some friends last night that I just had zero impetus <laughs> to record because I didn't want to drag all the crap out. But then when I realized that it had been so long, I was like, I better record. Otherwise, I'm going to have more crap to drag out. So here we are. <laughs> okay, so I hope all is well in your world. Um, things are status quo here at La Casa de Cozier. Um, our weather has been very strange as per usual in Texas. It has been 30 degrees, it has been 86 degrees, it has been back and forth, back and forth. So yesterday I was freezing all day long. Today I'm comfortable. What can I say? Um, I have unfortunately I've been suffering from migraines so my stitching has been a little sporadic uh, and I've missed I really like to stitch every day but I've missed a few days here and there because I just couldn't do it so but we'll get into it so let me get my notes up and we'll just start going through it. In fact, I'm feeling like I'm getting a headache as we speak, but we shall push on. Uh, I still have the wedding quilt up. I usually leave this up until our anniversary in April. So once that comes down, the kimonos will come back in case anybody cares. <laughs> so um, so let's see, uh, what have I been working on? I have a whole stack of things that I have been working on. And what I will say is I have just been sort of doing whatever I feel like, AKA I do what I want. I have been trying to though when I pick something up to work on it, I've been trying to kind of get to a natural stopping point on it before I move on. Um, like I haven't really set, you know, a goal of I want to stitch this much or for this length of time or this many things on it or whatever. So I've just been kind of working on it until I just kind of come to a natural stopping point is really sort of what I've been doing in most cases. There have been a few cases where that did not happen, but we can talk about the reasons why. So, sorry, I think I just hit the stand. The biggest thing that I have been, or not the biggest, the, the thing I have been working on the most is Mary Snow by Hands Across the Sea. It's 
and that's what that looks like. She's a very sweet little sampler. Um, of course, it has two swans on it, so I had to stitch it, but I do also like the owls and the parrots and the lion and the deer and whatever this little thing here is, which I think we determined might be a goat. And I love these little houses. So really, I just love everything about it. And I started this uh, December 23rd as a stitch along with Christy from Cross Hatch Quilts. Um, and I've just been kind of working on it off and on. I am stitching it with the DMC, the called for DMC, with the exception of the red. It just happened to call for the same Verisua that I used in Sarah Ann Banton, so I had it on hand, and I thought, why not? So, um, here are most of the colors. So, here is where I am, and I am stitching this on 40 count fabric. It is a Victorian mono fabric called Antique Sampler. 40 count. I think I said that. So, here's where I'm at. And uh, so, I think the last time you saw it, I had from the tree over. I had done the border. Obviously, I haven't done the flowers up in the top border. Um, and I think I just sort of had like this corner done because for whatever reason, I just wanted to start in this corner because I really wanted to stitch that little house. So since then, and there's that weird goat thing. Um, since then, Obviously, I've stitched the two disco platforms uh, with the lion and the deer on it, on them. Um, and I stitched this big motif with the two parrots, the two little people, and um, last night I stitched this tree. So. I'm loving it. I enjoy working on it. Um, and I've picked it up and set it aside and picked it up and set it aside and picked it, you know, that sort of thing. So, but I keep coming back to it because I just really enjoy it and enjoy working on it. And so this is the center. Um, and so all these things over here are going to be repeated over here. So you can see I'm, I don't have, you know, like it, it maybe goes to here. Um, there's not that much that you're not seeing. So, but it's been a fun little piece to work on. And, um, so I will probably work on it a little while. Um, and I will probably just continue to pick it up until I have it finished. Because like I said, it's not that big a piece and I'd really like to just see it finished. So I worked on that. Um, I think the last time I talked to you, I had mentioned um, I showed you a deck of tarot cards that I got from the Creeping Moon um, that were my inspiration for my Dutch Beauty colorway uh, that I'm doing, my conversion that I'm doing. So, um, I decided to get out Dutch Beauty and work on it. And the motif that I was working on Part of the reason that I had put it away was because I wasn't, I wasn't really sold on the colors that I had chosen and I was a little stuck. And so what I ended up doing was 
I just charted out that motif and tried to um, choose my colors ahead of time. Like, because that way, if I had colors that weren't working, I can just swap them around in the charting software <laughs> instead of having to rip out. So, um, this is the motif that I was working on, and I just wanted to kind of show you um, what I did so that I could kind of see, you know, what I wanted this to look like, what I wanted to, you know, which colors I wanted to go where. I am sort of following, uh, let me back up. So I'm doing a full conversion of Dutch Beauty to be dark. And let me just show you, assuming I have it here, here is what it looks like for those of you that aren't familiar. This is what Dutch Beauty looks like. And so it has a very pretty color palette, what I call Dutch Springtime. Um, but I didn't want Dutch springtime. I wanted dark German forest. <laughs> so um, I have been working on completely converting this. I am doing it on a darker color fabric, etc. And since I showed progress photos of Dutch beauty while I was working on it most recently, I have had several people ask if I would be willing to share my conversion. And here's my answer. I am more than happy to share my conversion. However, it is not a one for one conversion. So you can't just say, you know, DMC 3768 is now going to be blah, blah, whatever. It is quite possible that when I get done with this, I may use 75 colors instead of the 14 or so colors that are called for. I don't even think it's 14. I think it's more like 10. But it's highly possible <laughs> that that could happen. So you're more than welcome to it if you want it. Just keep that in mind and I'm converting as I go. So it may be years before I'm done with it. But, so when I started looking at this motif and yes, I'm gonna show it to you even though it's a chart because You're talking about this motif right here. So in the grand scheme of things. So when I started looking at this motif, I am attempting to, you know, if it is calling for five colors, I'm trying to use five colors. Um, if it is calling for, you know, something a little lighter, something a little darker, like I'm trying to kind of keep the spirit of the colors that were chosen or the way that it was uh, colored to begin with. I'm trying to kind of keep the spirit of it, just changing the actual colors themselves. So, um, so this is what I came up with. And you can see, even after I did this, I still had to make some changes. So, um, game day decision, right? And so I picked this up and my goal was to work on that motif and get it done. And so, that's what I did. I worked on it until I finished that motif. And so here is that motif. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, when I picked this up, 
I had one of these big flowers filled in and I had started stitch or I had stitched, I think most of this vase. And I left, you know, the red that was in here um, and used that as kind of my base color. I completely ripped out this vase and I flipped the colors because the vase itself was supposed to be this gold color um, and it was too bright. So I flipped the colors. Uh, I made it darker with the gold um, accents and I think it looks much better. And um, I'm really quite pleased with how that came out. So, and there is another one on the other side. And so my intention is just like in the chart, if they are intended to match, they will match. If they are not charted to match, then they won't be. But that is my intention. So here is what my whole piece looks like so far. Trying to get it where you can see that well. So I'm quite pleased with how it looks so far. Um, the one thing that I have been questioning for a while now and working on this motif I think has solidified it is that the green that I chose for the border is a very blue green and I'm not super happy with it. So with the other greens that I'm using. So the green that I used up here, this dark kind of mossy green, I think I am going to swap out this border for this darker mossy green. Um, and I think I will be much happier with that. So, that's where I'm at. And like I said, I, um, I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. Um, it just took me a little bit to get there. And I think that, you know, doing my initial playing around with colors and everything, in a chart form, in charting software, is so much easier and better than trying, at least for me, than trying to just pull colors and stitch them, you know, and kind of figure it out as I go. That's what I, excuse me, have been doing up until now. And on the smaller motifs, it's fine, but on a larger motif like this, I think it needs to be thought out a little bit more. So, and I did have a, um, an inspiration photo that I used um, for this color palette, uh, which I will try to insert here. So that's what I was working from. Um, and I think I, I, I think I'm happy with it. So yeah. Okay. So that was Dutch beauty. And let's see what else. Okay. So for Valentine's Day. I didn't end up doing dark 13 stitching in February. I don't remember why. It's possible I had a migraine, but I didn't. So no dark 13 stitching for February. 
and Ramses has come to visit. So on Valentine's Day, I picked up my Birds of a Feather Happy Hearts Sampler, which is this. So I started this last year, I think. And I had been wanting to stitch this for forever, forever. And um, it was very kindly sent to me. The chart was kindly sent to me. Um, so I've been wanting to get this back out and work on it. And when Emily C, Eclectic Possession, said that she was going to, this was gonna be one of her 40 new starts for her birthday year, um, for her 40th birthday year, uh, I said, you know, let me know when you're gonna start it and I will get mine out and work on it at the same time. So uh, we got this out on Valentine's Day. And so I worked a little bit on uh, some of the alphabet and finished a second row there. And um, then I worked some more on this big flower and got the big flower completely um, filled in. There's a big heart that goes underneath it, but this was pretty intense. Um, so that was basically what my stopping point was, is once I got this done, I said, okay, I'm gonna set this aside now. And I just really love it. I'd really like to get this one finished soon-ish as well. Um, here are, I'm using the DMC, or no, I'm not using the DMCs, I am using uh, the called for weeks and they're quite pretty. I don't know what is happening here, but um, we'll just hold that up and pretend it's fine. So really pretty. And I have the blue in here someplace as well. I think I don't have it on a thing, which is why it's, I don't have it in my hand. But, um, yeah. And so, and the fabric I'm using is 40 Count Sand Dune by Lakeside. So, really pretty, uh, and I think that if I focused on it, now that I have that big old flower done, um, I think that I could actually get it done relatively quickly because it is obviously not a huge sampler, but um, it would take some concentrated stitching. So. So I worked on that. Um, I got that out, like I said, for Valentine's Day. I worked on it a couple of nights and then I had a new start. Oh, and I may or may not have uh, had to have this Luna Moth bag from Vintage Owl Lady. And it has these pretty cherry blossoms as well. Um, and the little zipper pull is also a cherry blossom, which I love. And I love this mustard color here. And then on the inside, Look how pretty that is with those dandelions. So yeah, had to have it. So 
new start. Um, I think I mentioned last time that I heard about the stitch along um, that Karen from Fox and Rabbit, uh, Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, and Julie from Jules Darling on Instagram, um, they were stitching on Primitive Needle Moon Sick. And um, doing it on the full moon every month. And so I thought, that's a brilliant idea. Why am I not already doing this? This has been one of those pieces that I've wanted to stitch forever by Primitive Needle and just never have. So I decided to start it on the full moon in February, which was on the 16th. And um, I, it calls for silken colors, which I love those silks. They're squishy and beautiful. Um, I only had one <laughs> out of all of them. So I had chestnut, that was all I had. So I did, I pulled, I kind of just did my own conversion and pulled what I thought would work. And for the most part, I pulled silks. Um, I think I only have one non, two non-silks. So, um, and this is a one-to-one -one conversion, so. Uh, so, uh, it's a mix of uh, Belle Soie and Dinky Dyes and um, Gloriana and Pure Palette that was left over from my Blacked Sky. Um, I was looking for, well, I'll tell you in a minute, but that's what I have. And I'm stitching it on 40 Count Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit because I saw that Julie, Jules Darling, and Karen from Fox and Rabbit were stitching theirs on Duxbury and I loved it. So uh, this is my start. And so this is after two full moons. So the full moon in February and the full moon that we just had in um, March. So I love it. And I had originally picked a different thread for the words. And when I got to them, I really didn't like the color that I had chosen. I just thought it was wrong. And so I had picked another one that I thought would be perfect uh, that was a pure palette. But, and in the skein, it looked fine. But when I was stitching it with one um, strand, it was just too light. And so I went back to the well and um, I ended up pulling Acatillo, Acatillo, um, which is this sort of mossy green, which I think is perfect. So it was dark enough um, that I think it shows up well and it still had that kind of murky-ish, you know, look to it. Um, some of the threads are a little challenging because they're variegated. And so there was one, I think it's um, Irish Cobb, uh, that's kind of this weird sort of brownish, grayish, green color. And I, when I was in my Dutch Beauty stuff, <laughs> I found this thread that I had in there that I had pulled for that. And I thought, oh, this might be perfect. So this is um, Spanish Moss by Needle Necessities, which I think is now Threadworks, but it's kind of this grayish green. And I thought, huh, that might work. 
So I'm gonna try this out, but I think it might be perfect. We'll see. And it does go to kind of a brown in there as well. So we shall see. So yeah, I'm thrilled that I finally started this. Um, so happy because I feel like I need to stitch all of the brown of needle pieces. Um, and I actually may possibly have spent some time stalking um, Abby Bella Stitches Instagram and looking at all of her primitive needle finishes and realized there are several others that I need to get a move on. So, um, yeah, so I worked on this a couple nights uh, in February and then I ended up going back to Happy Hearts so that I could finish out that um, that big flower motif. And um, then I picked this up again this past weekend um, and stitched on it a couple, I was really having a hard time putting it down. <laughs> Honestly, I just wanted to keep going on it. But, um, I love it. And uh, in case you couldn't read it, so the, the verse there says, Wife, I ween thou art drunk or lunatic. And then at the bottom it says, Nay, husband, women are never moonsick. Which is funny because it reminds me of this episode of The Magicians. Did you guys ever watch that? Um, and there was a whole episode about um, lunatics and the moon and speaking to the moon um, and having the moon listen and the whole, anyway, it's very cool. But that's what that reminds me of now is being moon sick. So, um, I went ahead and left this on the Q-snap because I'm hoping that I can just leave it on there so it'll be easy each month to pick it up and work on it. And I'm going to go a little bit out of order. I'm going to talk quickly about, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just going to stick with talking about whips and what I worked on. So let me go back to my notes that are on my in my digital planner. <laughs> All right, so uh, I worked on Moonsick. That was a new start. Um, I did get to stitch with, at the end of February, I did get to stitch an afternoon um, with my friends, uh, my Chatelaine friends. <laughs> so I pulled out Egypt Garden uh, to work on it and made a little progress. So let me see if I can show you this. Um, so this is stitched with a variety of silks, rainbow gallery, petite treasure braid for the metallic and there is some DMC thrown in. And this is where I'm at, still working on this big center. Um, all of this will be beaded, and I think I showed you a few uh, times ago, maybe last time, that I did finally get that scarab, that Swarov Swarovski crystal scarab to put in the center here um, with all the beads. And uh, I think this is all beaded too, this out, these blank spots in here. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. So I basically worked on um, starting on these lotus flowers uh, and got two sides done. So you can see that sparkle sparkly fish. Love it. Those fish were a pain in the ass. So um, this is on 
32 count Days Gone By by Silk Weaver because I wanted something that looked like sand. And it's a really beautiful piece of beautiful piece of fabric. Uh, this is old Silk Weaver. So I cannot speak to what Days Gone By might look like now. These are all the threads. Yeah. I do not know how I'm gonna get this back in here. I don't know how I got it in here to begin with, honestly. But, let's see what I can do. I think I got it. Thankfully, Emily made me this ginormous project bag, um, meaning that I can shove a whole lot of crap in it. So, all right. So I just worked on that in the afternoon, so I didn't get a ton done, but I got a little bit, which was nice. Um, and then the only other thing that I have worked on is that true? Yes, that's true. The only other thing that I worked on is um, I did have a migraine for dark 13 stitching this month, but um, after my migraine was over, I did work on this a little bit. But you know what? This is just not calling to me. So I may need I may need to think about this. So this is the Dracula book cover. And I'm basically working on, I'm trying to get the top of this tower done is what I'm trying to do. So that's where I'm at. And so I'm trying to get this tower done. And I thought, well, I would work on it and try to get that tower done and then move on to something else. But after a few nights, I just wasn't feeling it. So I put it away and I think I worked on it until the full moon. Um, and I just didn't get that tower done. So I'm kind of tempted to go back to it and try to finish that tower up so that I have kind of a completion but maybe not having that tower done will make me more excited to pick it back up next month. So, that's where I'm at. And I am stitching that with DMC 310 on 40 count gonder lemon in that sort of blood red colorway. So, all right. So that's it. That's all. That's everything that I've worked on. Um, and like I said, there's been a little bit of, you know, back and forth. So I'd work on Mary a little bit, Mary Snow a little bit, and then I worked on Dutch Beauty. Then I worked on Mary Snow a little bit, and then I worked on Happy Hearts. And then I worked on, then I started Moonsick, and then I worked on Mary Snow, you know, so a little bit of back and forth, but it's all good. Um, I had two little pieces of um, stash that I wanted to share. Uh, nothing super extravagant, but um, in January, for the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild, we had our um, magic check-in. Magic stands for my annual good intentions contract. And so basically every year you, you mark down what it is that you want to finish that year. And then for everything that you finish, you'll get like your name in a hat, you know, for prizes. 
last year apparently I thought I was going to finish Sarah Ann Banton, His Eyes on the Sparrow, Francis Eden, and something else. <laughs> I don't know what the other thing was, but hello. Anyway, um, and so I did win a prize and now I'm seeing that this sticky note that was on here has left some residue. So I'm gonna have to work on that. I left it on there too long. Um, so I won this project bag. Uh, vinyl front and it has that plaid on the back it has these fun snowflakes um, this is by mystic meadow creations.com and it's very nice so I'll have to find something to put in that so um, got that and then uh so let's talk market you guys are probably marketed out already um there were several things that i uh loved at market um the fox and rabbit samplers um The, that Erica Michael sampler is really beautiful. Uh, you know, there is a sampler that's in the book that Blackbird Designs released, um, a new sampler with a little bird and some roses that I really love. And what else did I see? Um, and the humming of the bees. I really liked that one. Shakespeare's Peddler, that Throw Wide the Windows, I loved that one, but the hands down star of the show for me was this piece by Kathy Barrick, which I'm sure every one of you was like, duh. Yeah, I had to have it. <laughs> had to have it. So this is Kathy Barrick. The Moons of 2022, and it has this beautiful scene up at the top and down at the bottom, and then in the middle there, it tells you what the names of each of the full moons are. Um, so, for example, the March full moon that we just had is the Worm Moon. Uh, the February was the Snow Moon. Um, so... I really love it, absolutely. Now, I do want this to be, I'd like for it to be not just specific to 2022. I'd really like to have this be more of a perpetual calendar kind of thing. Um, so there's two, changes I think I may need to make in order to make that happen. Obviously, I will need to change this so that it doesn't say the moons of 22, 2022. I may just say something like the full moons. Um, and then down here, um, you can see that for September, she has the harvest moon. And then for October, she has the blood moon. So the thing about the harvest moon is that it moves. And it moves depending on when the solstice is, when the solstice falls. And it's the first full moon after the solstice. So sometimes it's in September, sometimes it's in October. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that it's only every three years that it falls in October. So most of the time it's in September. Obviously this year it will be in September. Um, when the harvest moon is not in September, the September moon I believe is called the corn moon. So 
I'm not really sure how to address that. And so I'm kind of thinking about that in my head. Um, I am, I'm tempted to almost add another line here that says something about the harvest moon and put, you know, September as the corn moon, leave October as the blood moon, but then maybe put something in there about, um, about the harvest moon. Also, and I don't know if I want to put this on there or not, but every so often we have 13 full moons in a year. And so that moon, that extra moon, <laughs> um, is just known as the blue moon. So it's the second full moon in a month is referred to as the blue moon, which is why people say once in a blue moon, because it doesn't happen very often. So, um, so those are the only two changes that I'm thinking about making. Like, I'm definitely going to make the change not to say 2022. I'm going to just have it say the full moons or something like that. But I'm still trying to figure out how to make the whole harvest moon thing work. Um, but I really love this. I love everything about it. It's beautiful and in a way that only Kathy Barrett can do. So it calls for, of course, NPI. That's her um, thread of choice. And that, uh, that blue, that iris blue that's used up here calls for three skeins. Um, this was stitched on 40 count paper bark from Fox and Rabbit, which is just a beautiful neutral. So I'm, I haven't kitted this up or anything yet. I ordered this from uh, Christine at Hollis Hands Create. I messaged her and I was like, uh, when you post in the Kathy Barrick stuff, because I need this. She was like, give me 10 minutes. And I'm like, Just kidding, she knows I love her. Um, so yeah, so that was the only thing that I ordered from Market because I had to have it, had to have it. And so my point that I was going to make earlier is that once I finish Moon Sick, I think this is going to be my full moon piece. And I mentioned something to Jules Darling and said, I think I'm going to do this. And she was like, yep, already on it. And she just finished her moon sick. So I'm going to be excited to see her get started on this one. And then I will bring up the year, the rear as per usual. So really excited about that. Love this piece. So um, I'm very tempted to do it in the silks. Very tempted. Um, it calls for a good number of silks though. So I'm going to look through my stash and see what I have of these. Hopefully a bunch. <laughs> but um, I just think it would be really pretty to have that sheen from the silk. So that will be my full moon piece after I finish Moon Sick, but I'm really enjoying Moon Sick, so I'm okay waiting on this one a little bit. All right, so that that's really it for the stash other than um, if we want to talk about my new blood milk piece that I got. This is a, this is called the your, um, planchette moth because the 
wings, the bottom wings, are in the shape of a, of a planchette from a Ouija board. And it has a moonstone in it that gives off this really beautiful, gorgeous, um, teal blue flash when you get it at the right angle. This was my gift to myself to celebrate um, the release of Sarah Ann Banton. So I ordered it back in December and um, it finally arrived. And I don't think I've taken it off since then. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, what better way to celebrate the release of a new design than with jewelry? Okay, so the only other thing that I have to share is what I've been reading. And just to give you a little idea. This is what I've been reading. <laughs> I've read all these books since I talked to you last. Plus one more. That was an ebook. So, Whew. yeah. So, let's see. I finished Lover Unleashed, which is part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood um, by J.R. Ward, and really enjoyed this. I have um, I've been rereading these um, with my friend Annette um, and <coughs> excuse me really enjoying them um, and we have been interspersing them with um, the Fallen Angels series also by J.R. Ward so after I finished this one Then I read Envy, which is, um, I think the third one. Yeah, the third one in the Fallen Angel series. And after Lover Unleashed, then I took a little side trip, a little detour, if you will. And I decided to read the Book of Life by Deborah Harkness. This is the third book in the All Souls trilogy, which I believe there is now a fourth book um, in that series, but this is the third book. And um, the first book was The Discovery of Witches. So if you're watching that show on TV, I wanted to read this before I watched season three. So this was excellent. Um, it was a much easier read than Shadow of Night. Shadow of Night, I kept getting kind of lost in, and you may remember I had to start it over because I was just, I couldn't follow. Um, this was a much easier read. This reads a lot more like the first one and, um, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend this series if you have not read it. Um, I'm really glad that I have the hardbacks now in my library. After that, I reread Sarah J. Moss's Crescent City series. This is book one, House of Earth and Blood. Um, I reread this. I read it for the first time last year and I wanted to reread it in preparation for book two that came out in February. So, and I'm glad I did because there was a lot that I had forgotten about book one as well as the beginning of this book, which I think I've talked about before, there's a whole lot of world building. And so it's almost like an information dump. Um, and 
it's a lot to take in because it's pretty overwhelming the amount of information that you're getting at the beginning. But once you get past that and get into the story, it's fantastic. But going back and reading all of that stuff at the beginning makes so much more sense the second time through. And so you pick up on a lot more. Um, but I reread this um, and do not let the size of this fool you because this is 800 pages, 799. This is book two, The House of Sky and Breath. This one is 801 pages. Yeah, so this one is misleading. These are the same number of pages. The difference is the paper. This has like Bible thin pages. This has regular pages. I don't know what they were thinking, but there you go. So, um, so I finished House of Earth and Blood and then I read House of Sky and Breath and holy crap. If you have not read these books, you need to read these books. Sarah J. Moss also wrote, wrote the A Court of Thorns and Roses series that I am desperately in love with. Um, this series is very different. It has a totally different feel to it. Um, it's fantasy. Um, so you have witches and fairies and demons and angels and the whole nine yards. Um, but it is, it reads more like a mystery than it does a fantasy book. So these are, I highly recommend them. Um, and all I can say about this is my suspicions were confirmed. Blew my mind. That last chapter, that last sentence, blew my mind. And if you've read it, no spoilers in the comments. Feel free to message me if you want to freak out together. So, yeah, wow. Wow. And so speaking of Sarah J. Moss and A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is one of my favorite series, um, I think I mentioned last time that I was taking a course from um, Susan, a professor of words, about goddess archetypes and the women of Game of Thrones. And it was like a six week, five week, five week, five week um, course. Really, really interesting. I learned so much. And of course it was cool because we got to look at costumes and how those costumes kind of, um, you know, reinforced those archetypes so it was it was a really really great class and then uh as we were getting to the tail end of that she announced that she was going to do a series on the akatar books so i signed up so we have done the first two books we did a court of thorns and roses and we um last week did um, a Court of Mist and Fury. Next week, uh, we are doing 
A Court of Wings and Ruin, and so we're just on every other week's schedule. Um, the thing that I love about this, because I can go on, you know, Facebook groups and talk about Sarah J. Moss and these, the, these books all day, every day, with a ton of other fans, etc. The thing that I really like about Susan's classes, and I'm not getting any sort of kickbacks, this is just my opinion, but not only are we talking about the books, but she brings all of her experience. She has a background in fairy tales and in teaching English literature and um, was a professor for many, many years. Um, what she brings to the table is all of that experience and that wealth of knowledge. And so we can talk about some of the themes in the books. We can talk about um, where Sarah J. Moss is pulling her inspiration from, from fairy tales, from myths, from, you know, what have you. And it's really interesting to see that and to see, you know, um, to learn also, you know, these other kinds of things like these, um, you know, tools that, you know, that you can use in literature that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of. Um, we have talked a great deal about the female characters and um, PTSD and um, emotional trauma and, um, you know, the question about uh, the idea that oftentimes in literature, you see uh, female characters going through a series, you know, some sort of big change, but it's typically after having enduring some sort of trauma. Um, and so we've talked a lot about that. Um, it's just, it's really interesting. And so I'm getting a different perspective on these books than, uh, than I had before, just, you know, beyond just talking about books with these books that I love with other people that love these books. So, um, so that's been really fun and I'm looking forward to it. Um, we've had kind of a different, you know, group of folks for the first two books because you can do the whole series or you can do, you know, just one book, um, if you want. So anyway, um, but we've been doing that. I'm really excited to get to the next three books and talk more about those. But yeah, wow, Crescent City. Ooh, doozy. So after I finished that, uh, I went back to my Black Dagger Brotherhood. And so yesterday or the day before, I finished Lover Reborn. Um, which was the next book in the series. And this is the last of the hardbacks that I own. And it is also the last of this series that I have read. So everything from here on out is like brand new territory for me. And part of the reason that I wanted to do this reread is so that I can read the rest of the books in the series and get caught up. Because it had been so long. I mean, this book was released in 2012, like March, 2012. My dad died in February of 2012, like at the end of February. And so I think the reason that this is the last one that I read is because my life sort of fell apart at that point. That's the only explanation I have, but, um, so I'm really looking forward to continuing the series and reading them and sort of catching up and um, seeing where the series goes next. So I finished that a day or two ago. I think I finished it on Monday. And now I have picked, pick, picked up the next book in the Fallen Angel series. Um, there is crossover between these two series, which is why I'm reading them the way that I am. Um, 
I have never read the Fallen Angels books before, but Annette recommended them. Since there is a crossover, we decided we would read them, you know, in um, publication order. So the next one is Rapture. I just started this on Monday evening. And um, yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. I think I'm only about 50 pages in, but so far. So that's what I'm currently reading and really my plan, um, you know, with the books is I'm just going to continue with my Black Dagger books. I may take a break here and there, um, but I don't really want to get into another series until I kind of wrap this one up. So Throne of Glass is on the back burner for now still. Um, I did want to tell you about this one other book that I purchased called The House Witch. Um, so a friend of mine um, mentioned this book, so I thought I would check it out because it just seemed to be really in line with some of what I've been doing, um, you know, with my word of the year, which is clearing. And so this is... A complete guide to creating a magical space with rituals and spells for hearth and home. And one of the things that I really liked about this, what appealed to me about it, is the idea of your home being your sanctuary. And in the Goddess Archetypes class, we talked a lot about Hestia who is one of the goddesses that I really resonate with. And she is the goddess of the hearth. So um, it just seemed kind of perfect. And I have long held the belief that your environment, your space is a direct reflection of your internal stuff. And so if you are working through, you know, stuff internally, that can often be reflected in your external environment and vice versa. So um, <coughs> I've long been interested in feng shui and obviously interior design. And so this book just seems kind of right up that alley for me <coughs> okay I think I've talked long enough um so anyway I I've just read a, a couple of pages in this so far uh, I will let you know what I think about it but I'm really uh, anxious to see what I find in here so that's it that's all I've got as far as plans go um, like I said, I'm probably just going to continue working on Mary Snow until I get her done. Uh, I'll do my full moon sow, um, and I'll do my dark 13 stitching as it comes up. Maybe I can get kind of re-excited about my Dracula piece because it's, it's also, it's not a big piece. So I'd like to be able to, you know, actually finish it. So I think that's it. I think that's all I have going on. Um, we started re-watching True Blood um, while there was kind of a lull in TV shows, so that's been entertaining. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I've got. Uh, but I appreciate you checking in uh, and You'll have to let me know what fun things you uh, saw at market that you maybe had to have come home with you. And um, if you've read House of Sky and Breath, hit me up. So, all right. Well, thanks everyone. I appreciate it. And um, again, thanks for checking in. Bye. Thank you.